Welcome to First Person. I'm Lisa Van Dusen, and I'm here at the Stanford Red Barn with Jacqueline Hartman, who is the lead facilitator and co-founder of the Stanford Red Barn Leadership Program. So I'd love to start out um, by just getting a very basic understanding of what it is that you're doing here at the Stanford Red Barn. What we're doing is we're bringing established leaders out to work with horses so that they can practice working on both the skill building of leadership and the artistry. Because there's not really a place for established leaders to come in a low risk environment where they can actually acquire and refine skills. And we started off with um, clients that we knew already to come and see if they could indeed have an enjoyable experience where they were um, practicing and learning new skills. And what did you find? And what we found is that people really loved coming out here. That it was just the facility is of course gorgeous and that um, they were craving the ability to come someplace where they could learn their habitual ways and break out of them. And that's what it provided. Could you give an example of some of the kinds of people that came in that early time? Um, we had everyone from like, um, since we're, we work for athletics, we are a department of athletics, we actually had a lot of athletes come through. And, um, and then their needs were quite different from the executive crowd. And then we had a traditional tech company, a very large tech company come through. And that's when we knew that we really had something because it was transformative for that team. Can you give, um, sort of a sense of a before and after for somebody? Hmm. Um, I think that um, we just don't realize how caught up we get in um, habitual responses and that we're not really as present as we'd like to be and that we're not really accessing all the data that we have in order to make good decisions. I think also that people sometimes have a tendency to work with siloed or the same people. And one of the big things about this program is about bringing leaders to the point where they can remember that collaborations can be so much more powerful than working by themselves. We work with um, directors or an up, so a director can bring a team or a VP will bring a team or it'll be a group of um, people who are used to leading things. So the more established leader, they, they sort of already understand things like vision and direction and driving they usually have those things down. Um, some of the more subtlety things of like really like listening and taking in new data <laughs> and um, making adaptations to the situation instead of responding maybe how they did in a similar situation um, is where the real enjoyment then can come and where the new collaborations can come. So I think that people learn that they can work with we have them work with horses that they're not drawn to. Maybe that horse is too short, or maybe that horse is too intimidating. So we give people opportunities to break out of that traditional comfort zone of where they would naturally be. So of course they're already out of their comfort zone because they're at a barn and they're working with horses. Um, and they're in, like we're sitting in inside where horses usually are. Right. And so they're outdoors. And, and they're with horses in this space. That's right. So there's lots of things um, that, that are different about about it, but I think that they, we do a lot of things non-verbally, and when you're doing something non-verbally, we're asking people to track a lot more data. We're asking people to track um, senses and emotions and thoughts, and then to be able to make choices based on all the data, and then we let them talk about it. So maybe we'll let, there's, there's, times where we take away the verbal communication in order to sort of um, get the other side of the brain and the right side of the brain and the artistic side of the brain and the other parts of communication that we've been ignoring activated. And then they get to put it all together. Let's go back in time a little bit uh, and just talk about your childhood. Here you are. In, in many ways, you've invented a career for yourself. I mean, this isn't probably one of the boxes that you could check, you know, when you were looking at options. Absolutely not. Early on. <laughs> so can you talk about kind of where and how you grew up and how that might have led you to this, where we're sitting? Um, I am very fortunate that I grew up quite privileged. I grew up on a ranch and um, 
and my father was very much of an agricultural inventor and of that mindset and my mother was very sophisticated into community engagement and into the arts, performing arts, so I was a cowgirl and I was a ballet dancer. And where was that? And that was in the Santa Cruz Mountains, not far from here. And I couldn't wait to leave at 18 and go to the city <laughs> and be a city slicker <laughs> and be among the more cultured. So was there any particular experience or person that had a, had a big role in sort of shaping you and your thinking and your kind of your way forward? I had so many people. I feel that I really have luck follow me. I've had so much uh, privilege, so many people that have helped me um, make decisions, give me guidance. I'm also a person who seeks out other people's opinions. Um, I'm curious about pe what people do and why they do it. So um, I've always been very inquisitive and very curious and interested in my own learning. And people are very generous. So strangers have been particularly of influence in my life. So I've had the opportunity to travel and um, even things like getting lost in Rio de Janeiro at age five had a huge impact. Strangers saved me. <laughs> what was about to happen? <laughs> so um, it seems that things always sort of worked out for me and people always came to my aid, which I think has shaped me greatly to have faith and um, pushing the envelopes of how much people can do together and for each other and with each other. What are you excited about now with what's happening at the Red Barn Leadership Program? So what I'm excited about now is that, um, so I come from organizational development and change management, is that companies are wanting to come many times and wanting to send many people. So I'm very excited about this chapter um, in that so many people are seeing such great value and um, long-term benefits from coming to the program, even if they only get to come for one day. So my, my goal was that before, people would ask me all the time in training development, can you come and do one day with our execs? And I'd say, no, I work with companies long term. I do change management. You can't do anything in a day. And here, I think we've sort of figured out how to give people an amazing day that has long term impact. So I am very excited to be able to work with companies on change management so that they can come maybe twice a year, three times a year and continue to um, build their skills. And the wonderful thing about Stanford is that they really do let you, uh, stretch, your, you know, stretch your boundaries. And um, so for our team, our team is very highly trained and the facilitators um, come from the Graduate School of Business and they're lecturers or facilitators there. Um, and I want us to be able to stretch on the working with more um, an elderly, so older than we normally work with, and younger than we normally work with. And I think that it's just such a big part of life, and often these are the things that um, get in the way, or not get in the way, but things that cause us to pause or make us have big transitions are things with sometimes our parents or sometimes our children. And so um, I just think it, it just feels very complete. So the projects that I have are with the School of Medicine. We're doing a project where people who have um, early stage dementia and early onset dementia um, are coming with their care partner. So it could be a spouse or it could be a child who's coming with them or a good friend, someone who's living with them and helping them um, manage the challenges that come with that kind of a diagnosis. And what we are testing for is we're testing for, of course, cognitive improvements, um, but we're also testing for um, sleep. Are people sleeping better? We're testing for depression. Are people less depressed and more engaged? We're testing for anxiety. And the program is not just for people with dementia, it's actually for the care partners. So sometimes as care partners, we get very into our roles and um, we sort of, to break people out of those roles of like, I'm sick and you're taking care of me, and just like, no, we're people and we're a couple and we're friends, um, is very magical. There's a lot going on, a lot of emotion and human dynamics. What are your daily practices or routines that kind of keep you going? Do, do you have any? I have so many. <laughs> so of course I teach practices, we teach practices in the program. Um, but my regular practice is that 
I do a lot of things to be in my body because I'm a very heady analytical person and I love to learn, I'm intellectual. So um, I do a daily Qigong practice and I do a lot of Feldenkrais, which is the Feldenkrais method because my best friend happens to be a Feldenkrais practitioner. Very convenient. Um, and then I do a lot of hiking, but not hiking the way other people hike. I don't hike with the goal of to get from here to there. I do a lot of um, unstructured hiking, a lot of free space because I'm an innovator and I really like to have that downtime where I can just be present and just be drawn to a beautiful tree or to a bird or to a grass. And then I take a notebook with me everywhere and I take notes on different ideas and inspiration. What difference does it make for you that you're here in Silicon Valley, in Palo Alto, at Stanford, however you want to think about it, just like in this place? Well, the first difference is when I tell them what I do, <laughs> when I tell people what I do and you live here, people are curious, what is that? Or they're like excited. And when you're other places, they might think you're crazy. <laughs> so um, it's like you bring established leaders, people with high pedigrees and people with a lot of success under their belt who have changing the world and you bring them to work with horses. Um, whereas here people are like, Oh, and what is that? And what does that look like? And, um, and also that people are very interested in collaborating. So there's so many opportunities. Mm -hmm. So the opportunities are just amazing. And what would surprise people about you? Um, that I'm introverted, even though um, I'm so social. I feel my commonality to everyone. And that's how I can relate to so many different people and species. Wonderful. Is there anything else you want to share? Something I haven't prompted you to say that you'd like to say? One of my um, colleagues said something to me once. I said, oh, I feel a, I really have had some guilt around my privilege. And this person said, she said, but you share it and you try to use whatever you've had to better the world. And I thought that was um, one of the most beautiful things that you could say to people who have had a lot of opportunities. That is a lovely way to, to think about it. Well, thank you. Thank you.